Fear gripped Han Sen's throat, but he found himself falling back before Old Cat even made the suggestion. He summoned his Death Armor Swordsman Beast Soul and transformed into the Death Armor Swordsman. Hansen had no choice but to use the Beast Soul as his fitness was low. And since he was wearing the glove, he could not summon the White Armor. He could only summon Beast Souls. The Ang-looking creature blurred toward him. While Han San was also fast, he wasn't fast enough to dodge. Han San gritted his teeth and used his hand to protect his chest for a block. Pang! Han San felt as if he had been hit by a train. His body was sent flying, and he went barreling into one of the walls of the laboratory. He broke through the wall and continued flying back. After bursting through a few walls, Han San came to a stop. He fell to the ground and spat out some blood. Han San did not have time to wipe his lips, though, and he immediately regained his feet and started running. Old Cat was running, too, and he went right past Han San. Han San turned around and saw the red-eyed angel giving chase at a blisteringly swift speed. SH asterisk T. What is that thing? Han San ran as fast as he could, but the being was way too strong. Not even Geno armor could bestow the strength necessary to beat it. Old Cat ran, and as he went, he screamed. After the Crystallizers lost the war, they stole a few children from the higher race. I thought it was only a myth, but look at this. It's F asterisk King real. Crystallizers brought feathers to such places for research as they wanted their genes. A superior race? What superior race? Hansen gnashed his teeth. Don't ask. Just run. It's going to catch up. Old Cat shouted. Han San turned around, and the feather was right behind him. The fist was coming so quickly, strong and fast. Han San had already taken a hit, and his chest was still in pain. This time, he'd definitely be unable to dodge. He gritted his teeth and summoned Destiny's Tower. Pang! The feather punched Destiny's Tower, and the bottom of Destiny's Tower actually caved in. Destiny's Tower had gone through the God's Door test, it was far stronger than it had been before like Geno armor. But even so, the feather had just punched it. The power required to do what the feather had just done was breathtaking. Han San had intended to use Destiny's Tower to absorb the feather, but the feather's punch was enough to knock Destiny's Tower away. The bottom of it caved in. Han San gasped and kept on running. The feather was way too overpowered, and it made for a terrifying foe. The feather kept chasing while Han Sin used Destiny's Tower as much as he could to block it the feather's punches had made Destiny's Tower all crooked and twisted. It'd break if things continued like this. But Han Sin could not really spare concern over Destiny's Tower, given the circumstances. He had no choice but to use it to keep himself alive. Old Cat, what is this? Can you deal with it? Han Sin shouted at Old Cat. Even if he sacrificed Destiny's Tower, an escape did not seem likely. When the tower broke, he would be killed. Stop thinking and just run. It's beyond either of our levels. This thing must have been tortured by the crystallizers. It's probably weak in comparison to others. If this thing was operating at full strength, you'd already be dead. Old Cat shouted. Han San wanted to run, but he felt as if he no longer could. Hearing Old Cat say that their foe was that strong, he knew this was the direst of circumstances. This guy cannot be a creature from outside. Hansen sighed. He is, Old Cat said without hesitation. Hansen was feeling desperate, as there was no safe place he could run to. The feather punched Destiny's tower with an extra hearty hit, and it sent the tower flying away. The feather was the same as it had been, though. And then, it threw another punch towards Hansen. Hansen used so many different types of movement, but he was incapable of evading the feather. He gritted his teeth and threw a punch back at the foe. Han Sen was prepared to borrow strength from every ability he had. The fitness of a super creature was minuscule in comparison to a feather, after all. He used In Yang Blast In Power. Even if he was risking having his organs damaged, he had to try to outrun his pursuer. The fists collided with each other, and as the fists came into contact, Han Sen readied himself. He felt a scary power come through his right fist, hitting the feather. Those two powers created a massive shockwave that toppled all the buildings around them, while Hansen was entirely fine. Hansen's right hand was glowing, 
The light shone across his body, and he was completely wrapped up by it. Han Sen felt as if he was full of power. It was almost endless, like an endless river coursing through his body. The armor that looked like jade and bone started to cover up his entire body. It almost looked like he was wearing the white Geno armor, but he wasn't. Before Han Sen could get a better look, though, the feather appeared again. Its fist was raging toward him, and the speed was incredibly fast. Han Sen quickly dodged the feather, and he was surprised. With the armor that had come from the glove, he could catch up with the feather's speed. Feather threw a punch, but Han Sen was unafraid. He walked forward to it, dodged the fist, and struck the feather's belly. This resulted in the feather looking like a shrimp, shooting backward. Han Sen was happy about this, but his hand was not relenting. It was going after the feather. His fists and legs followed like a storm. With the armor's buffing, Han Sen's strength and speed were now comparable to the feather. The feather only had strength, though. It had no skill or technique. This allowed Han Sen to suppress it with ease. Huh. Old Cat saw the changes surge through Han Sen's glove, and he looked shocked. And then he looked annoyed and said, That glove is actually good. I would have gone and gotten it myself, if I had known. Every punch Han Sen delivered to the feather was extremely hard, making the being bleed profusely. The feather's speed and strength were no worse than Han Sen's, but its experience and skill were considerably lacking. Only their stats were on the same page. Suddenly, Han Sen threw a punch that the feather managed to dodge. And right after, the feather retaliated with one aimed for Han Sen's stomach. This gave Han Sen a shock. It wasn't because the feather's punch was powerful, though. It was because it was a punch he himself had used once before. Deal with him soon. He's too strong. He learns fast, and you will lose the advantage you currently hold very soon. Old Cat shouted. As Old Cat yelled, Han Sen dodged the punch and grabbed the feather's arm. He swiftly jerked his elbow to drive it into his opponent's throat. The feather shrieked in agony. Han Sen didn't relent, though, and he twisted his foe's arm and pinned it against his back. With one hand to keep his arm restricted, Han Sen used his other hand to repeatedly punch his foe in the head. The feather couldn't muster much strength due to the way its arm was twisted and locked. Without being able to block the attacks, all it could do was submit to the beating and bleed. Katcha! The feather then flipped its body, no longer caring for its arm. The arm broke, but the feather got free. He stared Han Sen down. It was strange, though. The feather looked as if nothing had happened, and with its head, it tried to ram Han Sen roughly. Han Sen twirled in an evasion and dodged the strike. He grabbed his enemy by the throat and put him into a chokehold. With his knee, he repeatedly hit the feather's chest. Pang! The knee pounded the chest like a drum. Han Sen did that five times, until he heard the bones break and could feel the chest cave inwards. The feather coughed up blood and roared. It grabbed Han Sen by the leg and bit at the teeth pierced through his armor and went into his flesh. Han Sen's reaction was fast, though. He squeezed his foe by the neck and he stopped. If he kept on going, the neck would snap. Han Sen twisted the feather's neck so far around, the head was back to front. The being smiled at Han Sen as blood poured out of its mouth. It looked scary. A second later, he grabbed Han Sen's arm and delivered his own twist. He wanted to use the same arm lock that Han Sen had. You are too naive to copy my own skills and use them against me. Han Sen slammed his elbow into the enemy's face. Blood splattered everywhere as the face caved in. The feather hit the ground with an impact that formed a crater. Han Sen's body was like a meteor, then. He slammed his knee down against the feather's throat, breaking the neck completely. The feather's head turned to the side, but it had lost all support for turning back. Still, the being didn't die, and it did its best to stop Han Sen. Han Sen kept on attacking the feather until its body was nothing but a mangled mess. When Han Sen took a second to admire his handiwork, he was looking at a mangled mess rather than a body. But he realized that the being still wasn't dead. It was incredibly sturdy. F asterisk CK. Why won't this thing die? Han Sen halted. Old Cat, who wasn't too far away, said, Feathers don't have a weakness, Peresi. You'll just have to rip its body apart. There's nothing else you can really do. 
If that's how it's done, then I will send it to hell in pieces. Han Sen's fists raged with greater fury. The feather's limbs and chest were all broken, and its skull was deformed. But still, the feather did not die. It was very strong. PSSSD. Han Sen ripped off a bloodied white wing. The feather let out an animalistic shriek of pain. Han Sen saw the being real in pain after that, and he realized that the feather hadn't reacted that way to any other injury. So, Han Sen grabbed the other wing, too. Han Sen punched and punched until the bones broke and he could rip the wings off. The feather grabbed Han Sen, but Han Sen kicked him off. Then, he went back to pummeling the thing like crazy. A lu a lu. When he punched, Han Sen couldn't help but copy Xie Qing King. It felt as if he'd punch harder that way. Pang. The power was brought down on the feather's neck, and after hundreds of punches, the neck finally began to give. After that, Han Sen ripped the enemy's head off. But strangely, the body without a brain still wanted a piece of Han Senator, and the head itself tried to bite into Han Sen's throat. F asterisk CKU. Han San kicked the body away and rammed his fist into the brain. He mashed it continuously. Blood and juices went everywhere as the head broke. With the repeated punches, the head exploded. Juice went everywhere. The feather's headless body approached. With burning eyes, Han Sen moved to punch it. With a multitude of punches, Han Sen was able to break its body. The organs turned into pulp, and it eventually stopped moving. Han Sen wiped the blood off his face and slumped down on the ground, gasping. He felt as if his limbs were numb. That was the first time Han Sen had beaten something for so long that he exhausted himself in the process. Old Cat, what was this thing? Han Sen looked at Old Cat. The cat went over to the corpse and tried to take something off it. Even though Han San was tired, he still jumped up and went in front of Old Cat. He licked his lips and said, Old Cat, this is wrong. You didn't do anything, and now you want to loot whatever is available? Old Cat smiled and said, I am worried that you didn't realize it was a good item. I was just going to fetch it for you. Why? What did you see? Han San asked him, I see these bones aren't too bad. They might make a good soup. Old Cat gave him a thumbs up, but Hansen didn't believe this. He stepped over to the body and examined it more closely. Old Cat was digging right about here. So what was he after? Hansen thought to himself. He only saw organs, blood, and bones. It was pretty gross to look at. It was fortunate Hansen was not super hygienic. He rooted around in the organs and bones and searched amongst the blood for a bit. He eventually found something, and it sure didn't feel like bone. Hansen put the item in his hand. It was around 10 centimeters long, and it looked like a bone. But it didn't feel like a bone. It actually felt heavier than metal. It was obscured in a lot of blood, so it was hard to discern its original appearance. He wiped it all away to reveal its true form. It was part of a small bone, but it was red and a little purplish. It was different from the feather's other bones. Han San kept looking around the dead body. Aside from that little bone, the rest were white and of the correct weight. They were a little heavier than a human's, but not like the way the purple one was. That was way heavier. What is this? Han San asked Old Cat, holding out the bone. The cat looked bored, like he could not even muster the energy to answer. A bone? What else could it be? Old Cat didn't answer him straight, so Han San didn't bother asking him again. If the cat wasn't going to tell him anything, it was pointless trying to get answers from him. Hansen investigated the bone himself, but he found nothing truly special about it. Or at least, he couldn't at the moment. So, he put the bone away and turned to ask the old cat, Old cat, do you know how I can get back to the Alliance? Hansen did not want to be there for long. God's organization might have found his home. He would need to return as soon as he could. There was no time to waste. Find a teleporter in a shelter. You can get back that way, Old Cat said casually. If I teleport, where will I end up? Hansen asked. The teleporter of a shelter would send a person back to the point they entered from. But the Nine Life Cat tattoo had pulled him in from nowhere specific. He hadn't used a teleporter, and thus, he didn't know what would happen to him if he used one now. Old Cat sighed and said, It's hard to tell. You might end up somewhere random. Hearing Old Cat say this, Hansen's face fell. Teleporting randomly was bad. 
If he ended up somewhere far from planet Roka, he couldn't make it home in any short jiffy. Han Sen asked how he could leave the ruins he was currently in and if there were any shelters nearby the cat was aware of. Then, he left. Old cat didn't want to leave yet, though. He still wanted to unearth more items. But Han Sen had to go, and so he left the ruins via the directions given to him by old cat. He proceeded to the nearest shelter. Han Sen had been in the fourth god's sanctuary for a long time, but he was in an area he had never ventured to before. He had only heard Old Cat tell him that there was a shelter around. Old Cat had never been there, though, and it had been taken over by creatures. To Han Sen, that sounded like a super shelter. Han Sen used his death armor swordsman on his way there. Han Sen's fitness was 10,000. Using the super shape-shifting beast soul would burden his body. Before, Han Sen wouldn't have been able to use it for very long. But his body had changed after the ascension, and shapeshift beast souls did not tax him like they used to. Black Sky Demon Shelter was around that mountain someplace. Xie Qing King frowned and leaned forward. He saw a humanoid creature with black horns. Black God, why are you blocking my way? Xie Qing, I've heard you have been cocky. Black God looked at Xie Qing King and spoke. That is none of your business. Xie Qing King said coldly. Black God laughed and said, It isn't any of my business, but you have been cocky around my black sky demon shelter. I will give you a decision to make. The first is that you die. The second, before he finished speaking, Xie Qing King's body flashed with a silver light. He threw a punch towards the foe. Black God was so mad, and the demonic aura he had blasted towards and against Xie Qing King's fist. Boom! The silver light and the demonic force collided, creating an explosion. Xie Qing King did not move, but Black God was knocked back 10 meters. It is no wonder you have such a reputation. You are cocky, Black God said darkly. Then he went on to say, since I am here, you can still choose to obey me. The choice is yours. With Black God's booming voice, the entire mountain was shrouded with a menacing presence. It became tangible as many forces started to surround Xie Qing King. In my eyes, there is only one word, and that is fight. Xie Qing King's eyes were on fire, and the silver light erupted like a volcano. His entire body became silver as he ran towards Black God. Black God grunted. The demonic aura summoned a black Gino core sword into his hands. He immediately slashed towards Xie Qing King with both hands. The demonic force came out like a rippling flash in the air. It looked as if it was going to sunder the skies. Xie Qing King clenched his fists and went against the demonic force. Then, a silver glove appeared upon his fist. They collided in midair. The silver light, however, was indestructible. The demonic force was easily broken, and the silver glove came down on the sword. A catch a noise sounded as the sword snapped easily. Black God was sent flying into a nearby mountain, breaking it. Kill him. Black God staggered back from the mountainside, shouting. His face was drenched with blood. Six scary presences surrounded Xie Qing King. They were all as strong as Black God, and they all started to attack at once. The silver light was so bright on Xie Qing King's fist, and the super creatures did not dare face it directly. The color of the sky changed, and it looked like the end of the world. Black God looked ill. He had brought six super creatures to attack Xie Qing King, and while they managed to hurt him, he had managed to hurt them back. The seven of them were injured, with one being severely wounded. Pang! Xie Qing King hit Black God and crushed his armor. Black God's chest caved in. Just as he was about to finish him off, a scary power appeared. Xie Qing King heard a cold voice. Hurt one of my blood, and you are dead. A humanoid creature that looked like Black God approached, carrying a demonic presence. A black hand covered the sky, crashing down on the area like a mountain. Xie Qing King had to dodge it. Father! Black God looked delighted. Big Black Sky Devil was one of the best berserk super creatures in the fourth god sanctuary. He was far stronger than Black God. With him there, Black God thought they could easily beat Xie Qing King. Xie Qing King, seeing the big hand approaching, acknowledged how wretchedly powerful it was. Still, that did not mean he was afraid. Xie Qing King was not very good at running. And right now, running would only make him die faster. 
He stayed where he was, making his body surge with silver light before throwing a punch at the descending hand. The silver light erupted like a volcano against the hand. But even so, the hand was able to suppress it. It was like lava getting squashed. Boom! The hand came down to grip Xie Qing King's head, which Xie Qing King tried to resist by pushing it back. The ground around his feet began to break, forming cracks that webbed the land for a few dozen miles in each direction. Big Black Sky Devil's hand kept pressing down as Xie Qing King held strong against it. His body began to make creaking sounds, suggesting it was going to snap any minute. Xie Qing, obey now, and I may just spare your life. Big Black Sky Devil made the offering with a thundering voice that rolled across the land with echoes. I only have two words to give you. Get lost. Xie Qing King ground out. The asterisk am in you. Big Black Sky Devil was furious, and his hand pressed down with even greater strength. Xie Qing King's body continued to make sounds of strain as he trembled beneath the pressure. The ground and rocks all started to fall and collapse around him. Xie Qing King's body expanded, as veins coursed across him like toxic snakes. His skin began to tear, allowing silver blood to run free. Killing me might be easy, but it's lonely in hell. Maybe you should come with me? No matter how much Xie Qing King's arms shook and almost buckled, his smile did not fade. After that, the silver light that was bleeding out of Xie Qing King began to grow in intensity. He was like a silver sun, and with that luminosity, Big Black Sky Devil's hand was unable to crush him. The hand was actually getting pushed back. Black God was in utter shock. Big Black Sky Devil frowned. He could tell Xie Qing King was willing to extinguish his own life if it meant bringing his enemy down with him. Big Black Sky Devil was shocked that Xie Qing King was able to unleash such power. If things kept going the way they were, Xie Qing King would die. He was happily self-destructing. The only question that remained was how far and how strong would the power unleashed be. There was no turning back now, though. Big Black Sky Devil thrust his powers down on him again, forcing it all into his hand in a bid to crush Xie Qing King. Suddenly, though, the sky went all bright with rain. Coins fell down from the sky, covering the entire area. Everyone was shocked as the coins fell upon Xie Qing King and the Big Hand. Their fire and power were suppressed. Someone walked out from the hail of coins. It was Hansen, who was still on his way to Big Black Sky Shelter. He wanted to use the teleporter there, but he had stumbled across this fight on his way. He detected the presence of Xie Qing King, and he knew he would have to lend him a hand. Big Black Sky Devil saw the coins, and when he did, his face changed. Are you Mr. Dollar? Yes, I am Dollar. Han San was legitimately surprised, not expecting himself to be so popular amongst creatures. His reputation even earned him the honorific Mr. After the fighters froze in place for a minute, Big Black Sky Devil retreated. With great politeness, he said, Why is Mr. Dollar attacking? Big Black Sky Shelter hasn't offended you. Han San didn't want to kill him, just strike fear into him. When he achieved what he wanted, he said, Xie Qing King is my friend. If you could let him go free, that would be great. When Big Black Sky Devil heard this, he was quick to respond without a moment of hesitation. Oh, if I knew he was your friend, we wouldn't have bothered him. Thank you. Han Sin did not know Dollar's name carried such weight. You are welcome. If you need Big Black Sky Shelter for anything, please don't refrain from asking. Big Black Sky Devil was unabashedly polite. There is something I need to ask you, actually. Do you guys have another shelter around here that is owned? I may need to stay there for a while, Hansen said. You can come to Big Black Sky Shelter if you need to. I would like to hand over the shelter to you. Big Black Sky Devil actually looked sincere. No, that's okay. I wouldn't like to be that big of a disturbance. Just find me another shelter nearby, if you can. The closest you are able to. Hansen said. All he wanted to do right now was go back to the Alliance. He wasn't in the mood to get started with something big like that again right now. It was good that he wouldn't have to fight for it, though. There is one, yes. But it is only gold class. It wouldn't be an appropriate fit for you, Black God said. That is okay. I will only be here for a few days. Take us there and ask everybody to leave, Hansen said. Big Black Sky Devil did not dare slow these proceedings and he worked fast. 
Without delay, he took Han Sin and Xie Qing King to the shelter. Then he emptied the place so they could have the shelter all to themselves. When they were all gone, Han Sun canceled his death armor swordsman and returned to his normal self. Old Han, it is you. I thought you went to the fifth sanctuary with ancient devil. Xie Qing King looked confused. Now he knew why Dollar helped him. Earlier, Xie Qing King hadn't been able to figure out why the elusive Dollar, whom he had never met, had wanted to help him. I don't know where to begin. Something has happened with my family though, and I need to go back. Take care of this shelter while I'm gone. Han Sen was afraid of what might be happening to his family at that moment. He didn't explain any more than that, and he simply used the teleporter to return to the Alliance. Please don't be too far from home, Han Sen prayed in his heart. If he was too far, it'd be difficult to get back. Before he went through the teleporter, though, Han Sen summoned his death armor swordsman appearance as he entered. Since the teleporter he'd come out of was entirely random, there were too many possibilities. He could come out of a public teleporter, or even a private one. Han San donned his death armor swordsman appearance before stepping inside. In case someone saw him come through and questioned how he had been able to do that, this was something not even he could explain. The elites knew he had ascended and gone back to the Alliance, but there was no knowing if they knew Han San was able to travel to and from the sanctuaries. It wouldn't be just God's organization poking about these matters if it became publicly known. The Alliance government would undoubtedly want answers, too. Han San was not afraid, but he just didn't think it'd be worth all the trouble. Dear God, please let me spawn close to home. It would be best if I end up straight on planet Roka. As Han San prayed, the teleporter's lights started to blur, sending him to his destination. The dimensions around looked odd, and when Han San's vision returned, he was standing in a teleporter belonging to the Alliance. Han Sin opened the chamber and took a look around. He was not standing outside a public teleporter, and he soon realized he was standing inside the music hall of someone's home. The architecture was fairly old-fashioned, but with the decorations and space available, you could tell it was a music hall belonging to a very rich family. Romantic music was playing, and it made Han Sin calm down somewhat. If this place belonged to rich people, he wouldn't be on a planet that was too far away. At the very least, it meant he could get home. Just as he was about to use Dongxian Aura to learn more about his environment, someone entered the hall. It was a beautiful woman with curly, wet hair. She had a white towel wrapped tight around her body, revealing her gorgeous long legs. Her skin was snow white. Her eyes were closed as she came in, with a glass of wine in one hand. She danced to the music frivolously, believing no one to be watching. She sipped her wine immersing herself in the rhythm of the music. She looked happy. The woman was in her private home, and she never thought someone else might be there. She felt entirely secure. Her mood was bright, as she kept her eyes closed while sipping wine and spinning to the rhythms of the music. It happened unexpectedly. After a few mesmerizing spins, the towel dropped from her body. And what's more, she was only half a meter away from Han Sen. Han Sen looked at her. And although he was delighted to allow his eyes to feast on such a wonderful body, he couldn't help but feel a little awkward about it all. To add to that, he knew who this woman was. He was quite close with her. It was Huang Fu Pingqing from the Huang Fu family. She was his senior, and he never expected their next encounter would play out like this. Because the towel had fallen, she opened her eyes in order to pick it back up. She opened her eyes and saw Han Senator they looked at each and froze for three seconds. Huang Fu Qingping screamed. The next second, she summoned a beast soul armor and tried to kick Han San in the balls. Han San was now very happy he had used his shape-shifting beast soul. She could not tell who he was in his current state. Things would have been very bad if she could recognize him. And so he swiftly dodged, broke the window, jumped out, and ran off. When he flew into the sky, he soared through the atmosphere. Asterisk Shoal. I won't let you go. Huang Fu Qingping nibbled her lips as she started to pursue. Fortunately, Han Sin was too fast for her, and she couldn't keep up for very long. Defense system. Intruder detected. Attack confirmation? The owl standing next to her spoke. Attack. Huang Fu Qingping said immediately. Attack. The computer repeated. Then, the weapon systems took aim at Hansen who was flying away. Boom! 
A net of lights all came screaming through the air toward Han Sen. That was the Huang Fu family's planet, and its defensive systems were strong. They could easily protect the planet from attacks instigated by entire battleship fleets. It was very powerful. Han Sen didn't dare use Dongxin Sutra and Heavenly Go. Queen was from the Huang Fu family, and although Huang Fu Qingping never practiced it herself, she would be able to recognize it when she saw it. The light was too much, and Han Sen had great difficulty dodging. So, instead, Han Sen used the glove on his hand to block the strikes. There were loads of explosions in the air, and the radar systems were disrupted because of them. Seeing Han Sen get hit by all those explosions, Huang Fu Qingping believed him to have been killed. Demigods would most certainly be shot down under the intensity of such blasts. When the radar system returned to normal, though, the satellites revealed images of Han San now up in space, entirely unharmed. He disappeared quickly from the satellite's viewing spectrum, though. Huang Fu Qingping was shocked, and when she went to confirm via the space telescope, she confirmed that he really was gone. That was Qingping Sr. Her skin and body are still as good as ever. It's only her grumpy mood that needs work. After Han Sen escaped, he privately complimented her as he reviewed what had happened and what he had been able to see. Han Sen summoned the unicorn beetle, then brought up its map. He wouldn't say he was either close to Planet Roca or too far from there, but with the unicorn beetle's speed, he'd arrive home in a day's travel. Han Sen flew the beetle towards Planet Roca, where his family was. Huang Fu Qingping was madly looking over the video that had been recorded, trying to learn who that person might have been. There were no cameras in the music hall, but the external cameras didn't pick up anything about him conning in. They only saw him escape and get to space. Huang Fu Qingping swore to find who that asterisk shoal was. She searched tirelessly for the culprit, despite knowing that he had used a shape-shifting beast soul which hid everything about the person behind it. She did find something special, though. His right hand was strange. He may have had armor on, but his right hand was wearing a glove. It looked very weird. She didn't know if it was a beast soul or not, but she could definitely start an investigation from her knowledge of the shape-shifting beast soul and glove the intruder wore. He must be a powerful demigod to block those attacks. That certainly narrows down the list of possible candidates, Huang Fu Qingping thought angrily. Don't let me find out who you are. Otherwise, you're done for. On planet Roca, seven creatures dressed in black were hovering in the air above Han Sen's house. They were watching. Yake, you are being too careful. It is only the Han family, and we aren't even certain they are descended from Han Jinji. Even if they were, you wouldn't need me and Rudy here. And here we are, alongside Buck, Gujia said to Yake. Yake's gaze was directed at Han Manor. He saw Ji Yin Ran, Zero, Bauer and stay up late all eating food together in the garden. Be careful. Snake Witch, Black Tiger, and Lu Jia all died. Maybe Han Jinji is still protecting them. Our opponent is not Han Sin, after all. It is Han Jinji. After Yake said this, he talked to a man with white hair. New community leader, how are you doing? Han Yufei, who had become the new community leader, calmly said, the new community has cut off all connections between Planet Roca and the galaxy outside. For the next two days, no one in the Alliance will be able to help this planet. I am not sure about the G family, but they won't receive word of any suspicious activity for at least three hours. We have cordoned off the area, as well, not allowing any other human to approach the airspace. Good. Thank you, Yake said coldly. Then he turned to Buck and another three creatures. Do it. Handle the Han family. Han Sin and his son must be taken alive, but do with the others as you deem necessary. Me, Rudy, and Gujia will deal with Han Jinji or any other elites that show up. You will go in unopposed and undisturbed. Yes. Buck and the other creatures heard what was said and then flew down into the garden. They were all members of God's organization, but there was a hierarchy and tiering between them. The Geno armors that God's organization possessed all had limitations. The members had to be approved and authorized to make use of an armor before donning one. Yake, Rudy, and Gujia were of a higher tier. Buck and the others were still in training after becoming gods. They did not have self Geno armor, and they could not be approved. So, their tier was lower. 
But the creatures that could level up to reach the Alliance were very powerful, of course. And they were very proud of their accomplishments. If Han Jinji was there, or any other Geno armor elites, they would be afraid. But in the garden, all they could see were a bunch of youngsters. They did not think they'd have much trouble dealing with them. After all, they had been in the top of the fourth god sanctuary in their time there. Some referred to them as actual gods. Luo Lan was having food with the family at the table. Golden Growler, who looked like a lion dog, suddenly stood up and roared to the sky. Han San and Ji Yin Ran knew Golden Growler wouldn't just randomly bark or howl, so they looked up. A fiery dragon came swooping down. It was over a hundred meters long, carried by swathes of red and blue flame. When it got in close, it brightened everything. To the left of the dragon was a monster with four wings. It had black scales. It was not as large as the dragon, but it was still ten meters long. On the right of it was an icy eagle. The wings of the creature were twenty meters long, and it came down shrouded in a snowstorm of its own creation. The three creatures covered the entire city. The building where the Han family lived suffered the brunt of that frightening aura. Luo Lan and Ji Yanran's faces paled slightly. These attackers were stronger than demigods, so needless to say, they were scared quite a bit. Buck and the others hadn't been approved to wear Geno armor, and neither did they have their own self-Geno armor. But still, they had been in the Alliance for many years. Their fitness was far better than the top demigods. Humans did not have many top-ranking demigods. Aside from Luo Haidang, the others were just gemstone class and that was still a ways from Buck's strength. Amidst Luo Lan's fear, she heard a loud noise. Golden Growler's body was expanding, and immediately, he went flying up towards Buck and the others. He was getting bigger in the air, like a mountain, and on top of that, he was wearing a gold set of armor. The fire dragon Buck looked like a lizard in front of the giant Golden Growler. The other two were tinier than that. Golden Growler brought his gaping maw towards Buck, as the dragon swung its talons defensively. But Golden Growler's teeth came down on his neck and broke it. Blood cascaded down like a waterfall. Golden Growler was using a Geno armor to bully the would-be assaulters coming down from the sky. He ripped the three god-class creatures apart in no time. They were bleeding all over, shocking all who witnessed the act. Luo Lan and Ji Yin Ran were stunned by the sight, as they hadn't expected Golden Growler to be that strong. Stay up late observed Golden Growler's Geno armor and squinted in thought. Yaik, Rudy, and Gujia were shocked, too. They were waiting for other elites to back the family up, and they never suspected the dog-looking creature at the table was the one they feared. Golden Growler had managed to kill Buck and severely damage the other two creatures in no time at all. That's so wrong. An elite with Geno armor pretending to be a simple pet dog. Oh, I am going to kill it. Gujia roared. He flew in front of Golden Growler and stopped him from finishing off the other two. Gujia looked like a human, but he had a third eye in his forehead. He was wearing white Geno armor when he swooped down to go against Golden Growler. Boom! Golden Growler slapped Gujia, and he was sent rolling a few thousand miles. His face looked glum, and he immediately acknowledged that he was no match for Golden Growler's strength. Golden Growler was like Han's senator he hadn't matured after ascending, and his fitness was worse than Gujia's and Buck's. But the power of his Geno armor closed the gap and fixed this issue. Golden Growler and his gold Geno armor were quite compatible, and the creature could make use of 60% of its power. That was higher than Gujia's compatibility with his. It was through this large buff that he could beat Gujia. Gujia acknowledged this, and his face looked grim. The onlookers Rudy and Yake had the same expression, too. They had no way of expecting there'd be a Geno armor creature dining with Han Sen, let alone one with such incredible strength. Gujia grunted. He jumped up like a silver shadow and avoided Golden Growler's attack. He went behind Golden Growler and attacked his head. Mere power is not the end-all be-all. Gujia looked cold. His fist was right on the precipice of coming into contact with Golden Growler's head. But in the next second, Gujia noticed Golden Growler was no longer in front of him. He disappeared. His target was missing. Golden Growler hadn't actually disappeared, though. He just became smaller, shrinking to a size that was a better match for fighting Gujia. If his current size was compared to that of an elephant, 
He now reduced his size to something that was more like an antid. Because of this, Gujia lost his target. When Gujia reconfirmed his foe's location, Golden Growler was running like mad. He flashed by Gujia like lightning, his claws leaving rips in Gujia's armor that leaked blood. Golden Growler had gotten smaller, but his speed increased. He changed from a strength type to a speed type. When Gujia fought Golden Growler, he was constantly suppressed by the lion. Golden Growler could switch between strength and speed on a whim, and it gave Gujia a proper headache. Rudy, make it quick. Yake frowned at Rudy as Golden Growler appeared and disturbed their plan. Rudy nodded, and a sky blue Geno armor appeared on him. His devilish body flew forward. Suddenly, he moved behind Golden Growler, sandwiching the lion between himself and Gujia. As Rudy moved toward Golden Growler, a holy light shone from the garden. The next second, an Anjbu like woman WRTH holy armor appeared. Her hands were like swords, slashing down toward his fists. Katcha! Rudy noticed his gauntlets were broken. His skin was cut and bleeding. Another powerful Geno armor creature. Rudy's face looked ill. The humble Han family had hidden two creatures with Geno armor in their midst that was beyond what anyone had expected. It was already difficult to become a god, let alone gain Geno armor. God's organization, from the time of its establishment, had only managed to collect tin. There were two right here, and they sure looked mighty powerful. Yake frowned. Things were definitely not going as expected. Han Jinji hadn't appeared, and they had already lost three god-class creatures. Rudy and Gujia were suppressed now, as well. Han Yufei was in shock. He had thought that Hansen had killed Snake Witch, but he did not expect Han San to have two creatures with Geno armor that might have done the task for him. And there they were now, suppressing Rudy and Gujia. Jian Ran was so happy. Little Angel and Golden Growler were attacking, and the dangerous fight looked like something petty that would soon be over. Stay Up Late looked at Little Angel and Golden Growler strangely. He already thought the Han family was weird, but this was weirder than even he had expected. Stay Up Late could tell their Geno armors were not their own, though. Two beings that have been approved to use Geno armor, if they could generate their own, could they be qualified? Little Angel and Golden Growler suppressed Rudy and Gujia. Yake's eyes changed then, and his body began to transform. It seemed as if he wanted to fight and sort out this situation out himself. Han Yufei knew Han Sun was not there, and he didn't suspect the Han family might actually have a third Geno armor to fight against Yake. Han Yufei knew Yake was stronger than Rudy and Gujia, though. He was at an even higher tier in God's organization. Han Yufei looked like he cared little for the fight. He kept watching Yake, and just as Yake was about to attack, Han Yufei gathered up a massive amount of power and punched him from behind. The silent and powerful punch was driven right into Yake's back. Han Yufei hadn't generated Geno armor, and his fitness was similar to Buck's. He had to find an effective way to assassinate Yake. When Yake was about to strike, that was the time his guard would be lowered. He'd only have one chance of taking him out, and that chance would be gone for good if Yake thought about putting on his Geno armor. Han Yufei was not cocky enough to think he could defeat Yake when he was wearing his Geno armor. Geno armors were not all the same, or on the same level. Boom! Han Yufei's fist went right into Yake's back. It was powerful enough to sunder a mountain, but his face swiftly changed. Such powerful strength landed on Yake, and yet, Yake had suddenly donned a steel-looking armor. His punch went against it, dealing zero damage, and it was like his hand had gotten stuck inside the metal. He couldn't get it back out. You have a problem. Yake turned around to look at Han Yufei. His expression was murderous. Han Yufei did not talk, and he simply threw another fist at his enemy's body. Yake grabbed Han Yufei's hand, though, and proceeded to speak. You think I'm like one of them? You are very wrong. Your skills might work against the likes of Rudy, but to me, it was a really dumb move. I have self Geno armor, and that is a very different thing. After that, Yake used his hand to break Han Yufei's arm. Han Yufei's face turned white as his arm was twisted. He started to develop a cold sweat his fist could not reach Yake, and neither could he run off. Go to hell. Yake's other fist was fast approaching Han Yufei's head with power. Han Yufei's expression looked dire. The gap between their strengths was too wide to cover. 
If Rudy and the others used Geno armor that originally belonged to others, Han Yufei reckoned he could make battle with them. He could possibly kill them, too. But someone who had generated their own self Geno armor was in another league entirely. Han Yufei knew there was nothing he could do right now. So, the best he could come up with was buying more time by throwing his own fist to meet Yake's. Idiot. Yake snorted coldly, channeling even more strength into his fist he was primed to deliver the blow straight to Han Yufei's head. Ji Yin Ran thought it was strange, seeing what was going on high above. It seemed as if they were fighting amongst themselves. Luo Lan looked at Han Yufei and suddenly felt a great worry come over her. Although Han Yufei had transformed and didn't look the same, when Luo Lan looked into his eyes, she could sense something. Just as Han Yufei was about to get punched by Yake, a hand suddenly blocked that immense fist and extinguished all that power. It was as if the punch had never been thrown. Stay up late? Luo Lan and the others were shocked. Somehow, Stay Up Late was up near Han Yufei, blocking Yake's punch. Stay Up Late had seen Han Yufei save Luo Lan once before. Seeing this same, familiar person try to attack Yake from behind, Stay Up Late recognized him. Stay Up Late blocked Yake's fist and immediately pulled Han Yufei away from Yake. Then he simply said, Go back to the Han family. Thanks. Han Yufei was in shock, but he knew now was not the time for talk. So he held his arm and flew towards Ji Yinran's building. Yake looked at Stay Up Late. He didn't bother trying to pursue Han Yufei, and he simply stared at Stay Up Late. You are a crystallizer? Yake asked, looking up at Stay Up Late. I did not expect there to be another crystallizer survivor, apart from myself. Stay Up Late looked at Yake. As a crystallizer, you have chosen to work for a human? Yake asked. I observe the Han family. Stay up late answered. Why are you killing those of another race? They could be qualified. You should not kill them. Yake laughed mockingly. Observe? The crystallizers were destroyed long ago. That thing doesn't exist, so it is pointless to observe. I am still here, stay up late said quietly. So what? Even if you are a crystallizer, you can't say that. Yake snorted and threw a punch at stay up late. Stay up late deployed his armor but he didn't fight Yake. He evaded the attack so that Yake only hit air. You don't dare fight? Yake looked a little annoyed. He hated Stay Up Late's face, the way it was currently. I am a soldier, and the oaths I am bound to forbid me from issuing harm to just anyone, Stay Up Late said coldly. His face did not change. Soldier? The crystallizers are gone. There are no more soldiers. There are no more oaths. I am the oath maker now. When Yake said that, he summoned greater strength and tried to strike Stay Up Late. Stay Up Late managed to dodge the raging attack, and after, he said, The oath is in my blood, regardless of whether or not the crystallizers exist. In that case, let me see your blood so I can check for the presence of these oaths. Yake's armor started to glow, shattering the dimension around him. But no matter how Yake attacked, nothing he did enabled him to land a strike on Stay Up Late. You can't fight back. Yake looked cruel as he punched a building. His fist was like a meteor, plummeting into a building with the intent of killing everyone inside. Stay up late frowned and immediately appeared in front of Yake. He punched towards that power and broke it. Good timing. Yake's Geno armor unleashed more power, directed at stay up late in the form of another punch. Two powers collided against each other, generating a massive shockwave that broke the buildings all around. Yake deliberately placed the shockwave near their building. As a crystallizer, you know this is against the law. Stay up late moved and destroyed the power unleashed at the building. He did not allow any of it to touch them. So what? Yake punched again towards the building, continuing to say, Soldiers are nothing in this era. What is the point of war? Stay up late punched Yake's power once again. He stared at Yake and said, True. The crystallizers are gone and there are no more crystallizer soldiers and crystallizer laws. It is good that you understand this. Join us. You will earn more than you did when you were a soldier. Ye continued to attack as he spoke. It does not matter who I belong to, but you are the sort of person that I hate. So, stay up late looked at Ye coldly, and his armor began to shine. A light began to envelop his fist. Boom! The scary power of his fist, like an erupting volcano came down on Yake. 
Yake used both fists to fight back against it, but stay up late was too strong and quickly whittled away Yake's defenses. Arg! Yake screamed, as the volcanic power continued to mount. Eventually, his Geno armor broke. Pang! Yake's body collapsed on the ground, forming a crater that was filled with blood. He was struggling down in the earth, unable to get up. Yake looked at Stay Up Late and said, Enthusiastic Rush, you are not a normal soldier. Are you from the 3rd Division Special Forces? It does not matter. Leave this place and never come back. If the crystallizers weren't destroyed, you'd be in jail. Stay Up Late said coldly. Ha ha. Yik suddenly laughed. A member of the 3rd Division Special Forces, huh? That is interesting. When you see him, it will be fun. Stay Up Late frowned and looked at Yake as Yake spoke to the sky. Officer, you aren't coming out? Are you simply going to watch us die? Or are you watching the power of the special force member killing me? Stay up late's body shook, and he looked up to the sky. There, a shadow was slowly approaching. When he saw it, he looked at it in disbelief. He screamed, Officer, you are not dead. Knight, it's been a long time. It is nice to see you. The officer smiled. And oh, he was handsome, as handsome as a god. He slowly walked over to stay up late. It is good to see you again. Stay up late felt touched. Stay up late's friends and family had died amidst the fighting in the past. Seeing someone he respected alive and in the flesh provided him a joy that went beyond the possibilities of description. Knight, come with me. The crystallizers are gone. But for as long as you and I are together, the 3rd Division Special Forces will never die. The officer looked right at Stay Up Late. Stay Up Late opened his mouth and thought of something. He looked at Yake and then looked at the officer. His expression was complex. Officer, did you send him to deal with the Han family? The Han family elders stole from us. We have to take it back. You do not have to concern yourself with these matters, the officer said. Stay Up Late looked at him strangely and he said, Officer, you taught me soldiers are meant to protect. Protect life. Protect the law. Protect the world. The officer quietly responded. I know what you're trying to say, but the world is not like that anymore. The world is changing, and we must change with it. The crystallizers are destroyed, but the humans and the Shura are still here. They have laws and order of their own. It is not our place to tamper with or subvert them. Stay up late still spoke with passion, and he went on to say, Officer, you taught us all this. Why are you doing what you are doing now? The officer looked at Stay Up Late. If the things I taught were so useful, the crystallizers wouldn't have been wiped out. We need more than law. We need repopulation. And so, we have to go out and try. Stay Up Late looked at the officer, his expression complicated. He wasn't sure what to say. His officer had changed, and he wasn't the same person that Stay Up Late used to know and respect. He was like a different man altogether. Officer, you claim their elder stole something of yours. Their elder. That implies it was none of their business. Please, let them go. Stay up late pleaded, looking at the officer. The officer didn't say anything, but he seemed hesitant about something. Officer, he is our only lead. We need to catch them to draw out Han Jinji. You shouldn't just let them go because of this kid. We have sacrificed many people in this pursuit. We can't turn back now. Yik shouted. Shut up. I am talking with the officer now. Stay up late stared down at Yake, who was looking like ice. Yake seethed, but he did not speak a word. The officer sighed and said, Fine, since you say it is so. The officer walked in front of Stay up late and patted his shoulder. He said, Let us take a walk, knight. I have many things to tell you, after all these years that have elapsed. Officer, Stay up late's eyes turned red and teary. His love and admiration for the officer of the 3rd Division were back. Pang. The next second, the officer's fist was driven right into Stay Up Late's belly. The scary palm broke through his armor and went right through his guts. Stay Up Late did not think this would happen, and he was already flying through the air and coughing up blood before he noticed it had occurred. He hit a building and broke it. Stay Up Late. Luolan was in shock. The officer was a truly callous man. Why? Stay up late stepped out from the ruin and asked the officer, looking up at the sky. 
The officer said coldly, To secure the future of the crystallizers, there is something I must do. You are the best soldier I ever trained, but even I cannot control you. And there is something you must do, and you must do it for me. You are no longer the officer I once knew. Stay up late's face was expressionless. The world is changing, and so are you. You just haven't noticed it yet. The officer was speaking with an icy tone of voice. He went on to say, Zagu, Zack, take Han Sen's son and the new community leader. Take them away. Two metal bodies came forward, approaching the top of the building. I'll go help. Yake looked coldly at Stay Up Late as he followed Zack to the roof of the building. Stay Up Late clenched his way through the pain, attempting to stop Yake. But the officer went right in front of him. Excuse me, officer. But I cannot allow you to take anyone, Stay Up Late said to the officer, wiping the blood from his lips. You are the best crystallizer warrior there is. You do not have to help humans as you are. The officer did not move. Seeing Yake was almost at the rooftop, Stay Up Late did not say anything and instead planned to break through the man obstructing him. The officer moved and used his fist to stop him, though. I am sorry, officer. Stay Up Late built up power and tried to annihilate the defense before him. But Stay Up Late had only just moved when the officer repeatedly punched him backward. Stay Up Late kept trying to go from a different direction, but he couldn't get past. Pang! Stay Up Late's chest was delivered another punch by the officer. He stumbled back a few hundred meters and coughed up more blood. I taught you, remember? I know exactly what you have learned. And now that you are injured, come back with me and make the crystallizers great again, the officer said. Stay Up Late did not speak, and he just flew over to the officer. But it looked like he was too late. Yake, Zack, and Zago were already on the top of the building. D asterisk him in you guys. You killed so many of our creatures, you should all die. Yake looked at them with murderous eyes. He looked at everyone, ignoring Little Flower and Han Yufei. Instead of going for them as he was supposed to, he threw a punch towards Luo Lan. Luo Lan's face looked ill, but she knew she'd have to fight back. They wouldn't be able to do much against such forces, but they had little choice in the matter. Han Yufei was injured, but he wanted to brawl. But just as he was about to do something, a golden light appeared. It was Bauer clad in golden leaves. She punched Yake. Boom! Two scary powers came against each other. Yake looked on in disbelief. His power had been broken, and he had been sent flying again. Bauer's face looked murderous as she hung in the air. Her fists were coming down on Yake again, this time on his face. Impossible! Yake looked at her with disbelief. He was a crystallizer with self-generated Geno armor. He was also the only creature that could still stay in the sanctuary after doing so. He lost to Stay Up Late, who was a crystallizer from the 3rd Division Special Forces. That did not come as a surprise, but Bauer was just a pet beast soul that belonged to Han Senator. He could not believe a pet beast soul's power could be even remotely stronger than he was. And Bauer was also wearing a Geno armor. Bauer jumped up and threw a punch towards Yake's face. She looked so angry and she knew who was important to Han Senator Yake had wanted to kill Luo Lan, which was something that swiftly infuriated the baby. Yake was in the air, and he'd be unable to dodge her next strike. All he could do was raise his arms and try to punch back her incoming fist. But Bauer's fist was like a hammer, and it tore Yake's arm open. The fist landed on his helmet, caving it in. The force propelled his body down into the ground with the force of a cannonball, cratering the zone. The angry Bauer wished to give chase, but Zack and Zago were slipping behind her and going for Ji Yin Ran. They were planning to take Little Flower away from her. Bauer's little body flashed back to Ji Yin Ran. To stop Zack and Zago, she gave them a punch each. Young. Zack and Zago were strong. They were stronger than Yake, definitely, and that was because they had also generated their own Geno armor. Even so, their armor sets were visibly dented by the punches that Bauer delivered. Yake's face, which was smeared with mud and blood, emerged from the crater. He came rushing towards Bauer with manic fury. Bauer fought all three of them with absolute strength. Her fists and her arms were so hard, Bauer was able to keep delivering strikes that repeatedly dented their armor. Yake and the others were in shock. It was difficult to believe that anyone this powerful aside from the officer resided in the Alliance. 
The officer frowned, seeing all this, and he was visibly afraid of the power Bauer wielded. But Bauer's golden leaf armor suddenly started to shine. The luminosity made it look rather unstable. Bauer had put the armor on to defeat Snake which before she really should have, and that had made her weak for some time. This time, however, she wasn't able to kill them immediately. It was taking her a while, and it didn't help that there were three of them to deal with. Things were turning dire once more. Ji Yinran saw Bauer's situation suddenly turn grim, and she gave Little Flower to Luo Lan. Then, she put on the crystal shoes that were in her back. Crystal shoes, please help us. We will very much appreciate your assistance, Ji Yinran said to the crystal shoes. The crystal shoes heard what Ji Yinran said, and then leaped down onto the ground. They slipped themselves onto her feet, and a crystal light began to shine everywhere. The shoes were like magic, and they turned into a crystal armor that decked out Ji Yinran. Before Ji Yinran could move, the crystal armor pulled her into the air. She attacked Zack with spinning legs. Zack threw a punch at the incoming legs, and they collided. But Zack's fist was broken against the solid crystal armor, resulting in a spray of blood. Arg! Zack fell back, as Ji Yin Ran was now in the thick of things. Ji Yin Ran joined the fight alongside Bauer. The attackers had a hard time withstanding Bauer's strikes alone, but now they could do nothing. They kept on getting hit without reprieve, and they were bleeding like mad. Everyone from God's organization was in shock. They thought it would be a fun event to draw Han Jinji out of hiding. The Han family wasn't even their target. Yet as soon as the fight began, they realized how scary the family was. That fear had only mounted in the time since, and they felt truly powerless and helpless before them. Yake, Zack, and Zago were having a particularly terrible time. They had claimed to be the strongest, and they had even claimed to be crystallizers. But now they were getting cruelly beaten by Ji Yinran and Bauer. They were on a short fuse now. Ji Yinran was not fighting them herself, of course. She was being controlled by the crystal shoes. The shoes merely borrowed her body for fighting purposes. When the officer saw the crystal shoes, his eyes opened wide. He said, Why would Eastern King's crystal shoes be here? Owned by these humans? The officer suddenly left stay up late where he was. He headed straight for Ji Yin Ran and Bauer. Officer, are you leaving? Stay up late followed the officer and stopped him. Knight, I said this is none of your business. The officer frowned, and then his body moved. He was unable to get rid of stay up late that easily, however. Stay up late's mouth was bleeding, but he could still smile and mock his former superior. You taught me everything, so you know me. But that also means I know you. You're not shaking me so easily. Step back. I do not want to soak myself in your blood, the officer said coldly. I told you I have been watching over them, and I won't let anyone bring them lasting harm. Stay up late blocked the officer again. You really think you can stop me from going over there? The officer sighed. I told you. We both understand each other too well, stay up late said. The officer shook his head. You know me, but you don't know time. It's been so long and things can change. Like? After that, the officer blasted out a scary power. A flaming pair of wings appeared, setting him ablaze, assimilating with his armor. Southern King Wings? How is that possible? Your Geno armor is compatible with it? Stay up late screamed in shock. There are many things of which you know nothing, the officer said, then pulled out a white sword. Western King Sword? Stay up late could not contain his expression of surprise. He was truly shocked. The Geno armors of the four Crystallizer Kings still exist, and I have obtained two of them, and they are blending into my Geno armor. No one in the sanctuary can ever hope to fight me. Before me and my power, your knowledge is useless. The officer held the white metal sword high as his body blazed with fire. He coldly told stay up late, step aside. Don't make me spill the last of your blood. Stay up late looked at the officer sadly. Without moving an inch, he said, officer, it was you who taught me to never fall back. It was you who taught me to always do my job. I will never forget that. The officer moved his eyes and then stopped. He responded by saying, If you must be like this, then excuse my cruel deeds. After that, the officer swung his white metal sword. But before Stay Up Late could see how it moved, he groaned in pain. 
He now had a wound on his chest that was deep enough to reveal his ribs. That was a warning strike, the officer said to stay up late. Stay up late looked at the white metal sword and said, The Western King Sword and the Southern King Wings are so powerful. No wonder they are legendary. I only use 10% of my power, the officer said. Stay up late looked down on the wound on his chest and calmly said, Next time you strike, and I don't dodge, please just leave my body here. A special ops operative that doesn't complete their mission should not return home. Why are you so stubborn? The officer sounded a bit angry. These are my principles. You taught them to me. Stay up late said. Good. I will teach you another lesson, then. You need to think on the fly, the officer said and moved his western king sword again. He did so faster than last time. But this time, stay up late moved. It was like he moved with the western king sword, except he was a little ahead of it. Stay up late grunted, and another wound appeared on his body. This wound was lighter than the last, however, and the damage wasn't so grievous. It looks like you can teach an old dog a new trick. The officer frowned. The sword had not performed as impressively as he had expected, especially after he put even more strength into the second swing. Stay up late laughed and said, I learned that from Han Senator humans are weaker, and their lifespans are shorter, but their creativity far exceeds ours. The skills they create are far more ingenious than what the crystallizers developed. You are falling, the officer grunted. He waved his fire wings and swung his western king's sword. Stay up late's movements were similar to Han Sin's, but not exactly on the mark. He was borrowing some techniques and skills, but he was adding them to his own. He was still using mostly his own talents. Stay up late dodged the deadly attack, but he was too weak to escape it all. His body was wounded again. He was beginning to look like a blood man. The officer, with armor from two crystallizer kings, was faster and stronger than stay up late. Seeing Gujia get killed by Golden Growler, the officer had lost all his patience. He waved his Western King's sword and prepared to unleash all his power. Stay up late had managed to avoid getting killed by the previous three strikes, but he had still been hit by each. With the wounds incurred, he wouldn't be able to evade the fourth. The sword was on its way, arcing down towards his chest. It's over. Stay up late sighed. He knew he wouldn't be able to dodge it, and he knew his body would be cut in half. Boom! Suddenly, a light came from the sky. It hit the western king's sword with the power of a small sun. It shocked the officer and his sword, and the sword missed its target, buying stay up late time. Stay up late's body moved fast, and he avoided the strike. He looked to the sky in shock. The officer's face changed, and he looked up, too. There was a shadow up there, moving quick, and there was a light coming down on the officer. The officer kept swinging his western king's sword to try and break the light, but he then saw a giant beetle land. Hansen had finally come back to Roka, and he saw Stay Up Late was going to get killed. He used the unicorn beetle's weapon systems to save him. Seeing the person use a sword to break the beetle's light, Hansen was shocked. The beetle's light was not as good as Geno armor because the mobility wasn't up to scratch. The officer saw someone appear and he didn't want to waste any more time with the unexpected. So, he had to finish his task before Zaga was killed. He flapped his wings and teleported to the beetle. He slashed towards the beetle and cut a three-meter-long crevice through it. Hansan was shocked, so he quickly recalled the beetle. The unicorn beetle could not move fast to evade attacks. He was afraid it could very easily be destroyed if that continued. Hansan the officer was shocked when he saw Han San emerge from the machine. He used his Western King's sword against him, trying to slash him like he had never slashed before. Han Sen's face changed and he tried to dodge, but his fitness could not save him from those swipes. Before he could move, the glove on his right hand became an armor set that shielded his entire body. Then, the fist aligned itself with the arc of the Western King's sword. Boom! The fist hit the sword and it created an explosion in the sky. It was far worse than the detonation of an atom bomb. The impact turned the ground into an ocean. The city became a ruin. Hansen's body fell back a few thousand meters. He was rather shocked that he didn't fall over. He knew the immense power of the glove, but even so, he was still sent flying. His chest fell awful, but his opponent hadn't moved an inch. 
That was a testament to the sheer power he wielded. Hansen did not know Western King Sword, Southern King Wings, and the glove were all on the same level. The officer was simply stronger than Hansen, which made the glove appear weaker. Northern King Glove I did not expect one of the four Crystallizer King's armors could be found here. Let me take the Northern King Glove and the Eastern King Crystal Shoes, then I can get moving. The officer looked excited, staring down at Han San in the jade armor. He flapped his wings alongside his sword. The officer looked completely murderous, and he wanted to kill Han San for the glove. Han Sun used the story of genes and let his energy combine with the armor to assimilate with it. Pang. Han Sun used his Dongxian movements, thinking he could dodge the officer's strikes. But he was hit, and he fell like a star. When he hit the earth, the impact created a big hole amidst the ruins and rubble. Why can't I dodge? Han Sin von der Ed. He had seen himself manage to evade the strike, so it was a puzzle. Don't look at his sword, look at his eyes. Stay up late, called to Han Sin. Look at his eyes? Why? Han Sin did not know what that meant, but he did know there wasn't time to dwell on the matter and think it over. The officer was on his way to strike again. Han San wanted to adhere to the advice and not look at the opponent's sword, but he found himself unable to do it. If someone was coming at you with a sword, how could you not look at which way the weapon was falling? You'd die if you didn't. This was instinct. Pang. Han San was sent flying again. Even though he was wearing the glove and its protective armor, he ended up coughing blood. The armor hadn't broken yet, but there were some concerning dents across it. His organs felt ready to give up the ghost. Don't look at his sword. Look into his eyes. Stay up late was badly injured, and all he could do was shout at Han San from afar. Explain it to me. How can I look at his eyes and not his sword? I can't do it. Han San shouted, as the officer came at him to strike once more. With his Dongxian movements and heavenly go, he did his best to try and dodge it. But the tragedy continued. Stay up late had only learned a bit about Han Sen's talents, but even through that, he had been able to dodge the officer. But Han Sen had the glove armor and was stronger. Yet despite that, his evasions were unsuccessful, and he was repeatedly hit. The glove armor was strong, but the Western King Sword and Southern King Wings were, as well. Han Sen couldn't keep himself from being damaged. The hand is the hard eye. The eye is the beginning of the hand. You need to see through his eyes to see his sword. That is his trick. If you do not register his eyes, you won't evade a single one of his attacks. Stay up late called as he healed himself. What does that mean? I don't understand. Hansen shouted. When the officer hit Hansen, the felon coldly said, Knight, you are too naive. Even under my teaching, it took you three months to begin to grasp the concept. Do you think he will understand in three minutes? How will I know if I don't try? Stay up late, gave a wry smile. He knew this would be a difficult concept for Han San to grasp, and it'd be a truly incredible thing if Han San was able to see into his enemy's eyes in such a brief amount of time. But there was no choice. Han San could understand that concept or die. There was no alternative. Han San realized he could not do anything to avoid the officer's attacks at all. So, he decided to stare into his opponent's eye and take his mind off the brutal sword. His eyes were nice. He had thin eyebrows and eyes as bright as a rising phoenix. While they were a pretty sight, Hansen didn't yet understand why he should be looking into them. At least Hansen had known how the earlier strikes had hit him. Now, if he was hit, he wouldn't know exactly how it had happened. Pang! Hansen fell into the ruins again. He stood up and exclaimed, Brother, are you playing with me? What is the point of looking into his eyes? You have to learn this and look deep into his eyes. Understand, or you will die here. Stay up late was confident about this, and spoke very surely. So, Han Sun ran back out into the fray. His armor had a lot of marks and dents now. It was pretty earlier, but now it looked like rugged scrap. If this continued much longer, it'd likely break and leave him exposed. Han Sen's body was already badly damaged, too. He had coughed up a hefty amount of blood throughout the fight, and it was fair to say that his body was in a worse condition than the armor was. Save me, officer. That was Yake's voice. Yake was severely damaged, with his arm all mangled. He was running away. The officer hesitated for a moment, 
but did not shy from his chosen target, he was still going after Han San. The Northern King gloves were more important to him than Yake's life. Although Ji Yin Ran had the crystal shoes, they were only using her to fight. Han San was a formidable foe, and he actually made use of the glove. If the officer took Han San out of the picture, getting the other item from Ji Yin Ran would be an easy task. Arg! Yake screamed, right as Bauer annihilated his brain. He was very dead. Bauer's armor broke then, too. Not because the enemy had shattered it, but just because she couldn't support it anymore. She had eaten a lot of fruit, but it wasn't enough to sustain continued use of the gear. Ji Yin Ran then held on to Bauer, who slumped weakly in her broken armor. As she did, Ji Yin Ran's legs still fought and held off Zack and Zago. Unfortunately, she was still unable to kill them. Near Little Angel, Golden Growler killed Rudy. Only Zack, Zago, and the elusive officer were left out of the attacking forces. Golden Growler wanted to go over and help Han Sen, but Han Sen forbade this. He bid that they help Ji Yin Ran first. Their powers were good, but they had not grown enough yet. And furthermore, they hadn't generated self geno armor. If they came over to help, the officer would likely kill them in a single strike. No. No. It's not working. Han San tried staring deep into the officer's eyes, but it was all to no avail. Nothing was working, and he didn't really know what he was supposed to see. The officer's eyes hadn't changed. He looked at Han Sen's body, but he attacked in a different location every time. It was difficult. Han San was good at judgment, but this was the one foe that his predictions did not work on. Pang! Han Sen's armor could not withstand the next strike, and it was broken by the Western King's sword. The strike almost obliterated the flesh beneath the armor. Han San was knocked to the ground, and he had trouble getting back up. If it wasn't for the glove armor, he'd have already been rendered unable to fight. The officer looked excited. He used his sword to try to stab Han Senator. He wanted nothing more than to kill the human so he could take the Northern King glove. Han San gritted his teeth, wishing to summon Destiny's tower to block. But suddenly, a scary power began to emerge and it landed right on Han Sen. The crystal armor on Ji Yin Ran became the crystal shoes again. They started running towards Han Senator without the crystal shoes, though, Ji Yin Ran started to fall from the sky. She wasn't strong enough to participate in the fight in her ordinary condition. Zack, seeing the crystal shoes leave, raced over to Ji Yin Ran with the express desire of killing her. Golden Growler roared. He suddenly made himself as big as a battleship and absorbed the hit Zack was going to deliver. In doing so, he managed to save Ji Yin Ran and Bauer both. A gaping hole was left in Golden Growler's armor and body as a result, though. Fortunately, it didn't hurt as much when he was that size. As Golden Growler roared, Ji Yin Ran and Bauer were able to get to safety with Luo Lan. Since Ji Yin Ran had now lost her crystal shoes, Little Angel and Golden Growler were fighting Zack and Zaga desperately. Fortunately, their opponents had already been damaged by Ji Yin Ran and Bauer. If this wasn't the case, things would have been far worse for Little Angel and Golden Growler. The crystal shoes landed right before Han Senator he put them on. At the same time, the glove armor returned to just being a glove again. Boom! The officer stabbed a number of holes into the ground. He was breaking the planet but he wasn't managing to hit Han Senator the crystal shoes and their power pulled Han Sen away, preventing him from being stabbed. How is that possible? The officer was in shock. He looked at Han Sen and the crystal shoes in much confusion now. The crystal armor was something special, and ordinary people could not make use of it. Once the shoes recognized someone as their master, they would never betray that master or be used by someone else unless the owner was killed. The reason the officer hadn't killed Ji Yin Ran was because the shoes would have selected Han Sen as their new master once she was dead. He had the Northern King glove, after all. It was highly probable that the shoes, given a choice, would select Han Sen as well. But the officer did not expect the crystal shoes to willingly follow Han Sen and not strictly remain with Ji Yin Ran. Han Sen had been very worried about his family being put in danger during his absence, so he had left the shoes with Ji Yin Ran. The shoes really did help the family too, while they were in danger with him gone. The crystal shoes never truly obeyed Ji Yin Ran. When they sensed that Han San was in danger, they went over to their master and slipped themselves onto his feet. Han San didn't like wearing them, 
but fashion principles weren't much of a concern at the moment. He had an enemy he needed to defeat. The crystal shoes didn't become crystal armor around Hansen, though. They became shoes and the glove remained a glove. Neither item shielded him in the shape of an armor set. It's useless. Even if you have the crystal shoes and the glove, you are still so very weak, the officer said savagely, swinging his sword once more. The fiery wings of the officer sent him flying towards Han San with the sword. Han San felt the shoe's powers dragging him back a few thousand meters. It was too fast for Han San to decide how to react himself. The crystal shoes on his feet provided him speed. They were much stronger than when they were taking the shape of an entire armor. And the shoes were far faster now than they were when Ji Yin Ran was making use of them. But the officer was still able to catch up. The fiery wings on his back could go faster than the crystal shoes. Seeing the sword approach, Han Sun remained calm. He went towards it. Han Sun had the crystal shoes and the glove. He had nothing shielding his body. He had a Geno armor inside his Sea of Soul, but he could not use it while he was wearing those other two items. Even if he could put it on, it still wouldn't be very good against the Western King Sword. Now, all Han Sen hoped he could do was use his gloved fist to hit the sword. If he missed, he expected he'd be cut in half. Before this, Han Sen had failed many times. He couldn't block the sword no matter how many times he tried, and neither could he evade it. Now that he had no armor, this was his last chance. The officer looked cold, and he didn't think Han Sen could block it. Just like all the other times, he expected he'd be able to deliver a cruel blow to Han Senator and furthermore, Han Sen's body had no protection because there was no armor on him. He could kill Han Sen and take the crystal shoes and glove all for himself. Stay up late and the others all turned to look at Han Sen now. He and Han Yufei both knew that if he was unable to successfully block the next strike, he would die. Look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. Stay up late shouted out, despite expecting such a call to be practically pointless. Hard Eye was a technique that was very difficult to teach. When Stay Up Late learned it from the officer, he had practiced the skill for a very long time. After many repeated failures, Stay Up Late managed to wrap his head around it and learn it successfully. Stay Up Late had learned it in the course of training, however. The officer had taught him by using the technique slowly. Months of training with it, Stay up late found success and managed to learn it it resulted in others calling him a genius. Han San was in the midst of genuine combat, and there was hardly any respite. He couldn't dedicate much of his mind to learning new things right now. The sword and fist collided with each other, but the sword was like a shot that slipped by. It didn't touch Han Sen's fist, and was instead going straight for his chest. He didn't block it. Stay up late's face changed. It's over. Han Yufei Lu Kid Il. Ji Yanran and Luo Lan were unable to see the situation, and they had no clue Han San was in danger. It's over. The officer could feel his sword tearing through fabric and penetrating flesh. It made him feel very good. After this, he would receive all the Crystal King armors. If he could combine them all together, he'd have no issue surviving out there. Seeing the skin on Han Sen's chest start to break, he added more strength. He had to ensure that he killed Han San in a single hit, without giving him any chance of survival. The sound of breaking flesh felt good to listen to. Seeing the blood cascade from the torn skin, the officer became ravenously excited. Pang! Suddenly, a fist like cold water slammed across the officer's face. It broke the fire that enveloped the officer and sent him soaring away with a twisted body. He fell into the ruins. He stood up from the rubble and stared up at Han San, who was in the sky. He did so with a look of disbelief. He could not believe he had been hit by Han San, and his mask had been shattered. Stay up late, and the others could not believe this either. They could not believe this had happened. I don't understand Hard Eye, and I don't need to. Han San licked his lips and looked down at the officer. The officer didn't say anything. He simply drew his sword and started swinging it towards Han San. Pang! Just as the sword was going to land on Han San, he managed to punch the officer's face with his right fist again. The officer's face looked all mangled, and his body was sent barreling through the sky again. How is that possible? The officer held his face, and his pupils shrank in absolute disbelief. It's fine. It does not matter how strong you are. 
I will always be faster than you. Before you kill me, I will kill you. When Han Sun said this, his crystal shoes propelled him like a rocket, bringing him right before the officer. This is impossible. The officer could not believe what was happening, and so he just frantically swung his blade again. The results were still the same, though. Just as the sword came down on Han Sin's body, the officer was punched away. Han Sin could not understand or learn the officer's hard eye, but that wasn't a concern anymore. All he had to do was be faster than the officer. Before he put on the crystal shoes, he wasn't as fast as the officer. Now, things were different. The crystal shoes provided him a speed boost that allowed him to rival the officer and become just as fast as him. And the glove, when it was in glove mode, imbued his right hand with a lot more speed and power. It was far stronger then. It had been when it was protecting him via the armor set mode. But the most important thing was Han Sin's predictions and judgments. When he no longer had to care about countering the officer's strikes, he just had to be faster than him. Pang, 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 pang. The fist and armor kept hitting each other. Han Sen's hands railed against the officer's body, breaking it fiercely. The once pretty officer was covered in blood, as more and more oozed from his mouth. His face was swollen and blue, and all semblance of fairness had abandoned it. The officer kept on flailing his sword arm in vain, but he kept on getting hit by Han Sen every time he sought to land a blow. He could only damage Han Sen's skin, and he couldn't hurt him properly. The officer just needed to be faster than Han Sen to kill him, but he couldn't. He kept on getting hit by Han Sen each and every time. Stay up late was in a state of shock. He had never before seen anyone triumph over hard eye in this way. It seemed a very risky thing to do, but Han Sen managed to strike first and firmly every single time. It really was quite unbelievable. Boom! After all those attacks, the officer's Geno armor started to crack. Han Sen punched him again, and he fell to the ground like a meteor. There was a giant crater following his descent. No. I cannot lose. I cannot lose to a human. The officer wanted to pull himself out of the earth and fight. Han Sen swooped down from the sky and punched him square in the head, though. And then again and again, he kept punching his skull into the ground. The officer's head was beaten into a pit, which filled with blood that bubbled and sprayed. Eventually, the officer's fingers weakened and dropped his sword. The Western King's sword fell to the ground and emitted some ding-dong noises. Han San wanted to keep on attacking, but the flames of the officer exploded like a sun. Han San, I will be back. After the explosion, the officer was gone. Only the voice remained, like an echo on the wind. Han San used Dongxian Aura and attempted to search the vicinity for any trace of the officer. The officer had definitely become an enemy, so he'd feel better if he could kill the man now and spare himself some trouble down the road. The officer was already beyond the atmosphere of the planet, though. He was traveling fast. Hansen wanted to give chase, but Little Angel and Golden Growler were both injured. He looked at the officer, flying away, and knew it would be hard to catch up. So, he decided to fly in front of Zack. Boom! Hansen punched Zack's head. His right gloved fist was driven into Zack's metal helmet and obliterated his head. His headless body crumpled to the ground. Zagu looked eager to flee, but he was far slower than Han San and his crystal shoes. So, Han San was easily able to catch up and send his fist right through the escapee's chest. Aside from the officer who ran off, God's organization was out of commission. But even so, Han San was still not happy. And that was because of his inability to kill the officer outright. Hansen looked at the white metal sword the officer had left behind. He held out his hand toward the metal sword, and the sword flew right into his palm. The sword had already left a big impression on him. It was as good as the glove, there was no doubt about that. So it was quite the treasure to have. Hansen did not know much about these items. He did not know the sword, glove, and crystal shoes were the armors of Crystallizer Kings. He did not know where the sword was from, but he sure knew how important it had been for the officer. Therefore, he spared no debate in taking it for himself. The crystal shoes slipped off Han Sen's feet, and then the glove left his hand. That was a surprise. The glove and the shoes could move by themselves. He already knew the shoes could, 
but seeing the glove just flap around on its own was almost spooky. He did not need to clean up after all that fighting, as the city had been completely leveled. There were no undamaged buildings anymore. Ji Yanran called for someone to bring over a big airship they could stay in for the time being. Fortunately, while there were many injuries, no one had been killed. Han Yufei met Luo Lan with his true self. When Luo Lan saw him, she didn't say anything. She merely grabbed Han Yufei by the ear and dragged him into a room. After that, many horrible sounds were heard. Han Sin got goosebumps just hearing them, but when he next saw Zero, he was shocked. He realized something. Zero was able to follow him into the sanctuary, and it never mattered which one. That meant she could always be near him. Up until now, Han Sin hadn't been able to understand why that was possible. Now he understood. When Han Sin first saw the Nine Life Cat symbol on Zero, he thought it was just a sign associating her with Blood Legion in some way. Now that Han Sin was thinking about it, he realized the symbol was just like the tattoo on his back. Zero could enter the sanctuaries without issue, unlike others who were subject to limitations and restrictions. She never had to go through a formal ascension process, either. Now Han San was thinking that if Zero had a Nine Life Cat symbol like his, the mystery was practically resolved. Old Cat had said that having Nine Life Cat blood meant you could come and go in any sanctuary as you pleased. It was a fine explanation for why Zero was able to enter any of the sanctuaries without ascending the proper way. And Zero teleported to Han San whenever or wherever he ended up. That was something else that went against the pre-established system of the sanctuaries. That was similar to what had happened to Han Sin when he ended up next to Old Cat. If Zero's tattoo was the same as his, that meant they shared a weird connection of some kind. They might have been one and the same, and that was why Zero would always spawn next to him. Han Sun thought this was very possible. He'd only ever had one brief look at her Nine Life Cat tattoo, though, so he couldn't quite remember the details. He didn't know if it was exactly the same one that was on his back. Seeing Zero, who was currently treating his wounds, he thought to himself, she's a grown woman. I can't ask her to take her clothes off so I can inspect her. Hansen thought about this conundrum for a while, but he couldn't come up with an excuse that would permit him to get a look at her tattoos. Zero, you haven't bought any new clothes in a long time. How about we go and get you some later? Hansen looked at Zero's clothes. He only had to make her wear something that revealed her back, and he would see the tattoo. No, I have enough, Zero said calmly, but I need to. You are a beautiful girl, and you need to dress up pretty. If you don't, people will find out I've been cheap on you. I will handle this for you, okay? Hansen said that all at once, not giving her another chance to respond. Zero did not say anything, either. Once she had dealt with Hansen's wounds, she left. Hansen was on the sofa browsing Skynet. He bought a few different garments for Zero. He bought a number of different clothes to hide the ones he truly wanted her to wear the ones that would display her back. Of course, he wasn't dumb enough to buy a lot of different clothing that all showed her back. That would be too obvious, and it'd be like he was making a statement. By buying a bunch of different styles, she'd be none the wiser. Two days later, the clothes were delivered by a drone. Hansen called Zero over and convinced her to try them on, one by one. And when Zero wore the clothes that revealed her back, Hansen was delivered quite the surprise. Zero's appearance hadn't changed much, but she had grown up a lot. She was a woman now. She looked very beautiful in the dress he got her, and Hansen couldn't stop admiring her looks. Zero walked around, with Hansen staring keenly at her back. He also took a photo, for future investigation. But when he saw her back, he really could see that the Nine Life Cat tattoo was the same as the one he had. It wasn't just the shape that was a carbon copy, either. He could sense it was the same via its color and feel. I was right. If Zero's back tattoo is the same as the Nine Life Cat pendant, it explains everything. But why would Zero have it and the pendant? Blood Legion had two of those relics? Where did Zero come from? Is she a human or a Shura? Or is she something else entirely? After Hansen discovered this, his mind found more questions than answers. Hansen believed Zero might be a human that had used a genofluid at the Shura grave. It was certainly a possibility, but the tattoo posed other problems. When Hansen became a god, he had absorbed the Nine Life Cat. When had Zero combined with the necklace? 
And how had she done it so soon when she wasn't strong? Dear, what do you want for dinner tonight? Because you are injured, I will cook. Ji Yinran pushed the door open and walked right in. She was shocked by the scene she was witnessing. Han San was lounging on the sofa, staring at a loosely clothed Zero. The dress she wore left her whole back on display. Han San wished to give her an answer, but he immediately noticed a dangerous look take over her face. He quickly told her, Zero bought a number of different pieces of clothing, and she wished to ask me which looked the best. Zero, you bought these clothes? Ji Yin Ran nibbled her lips and asked Zero directly. Hansen bought them, told me to wear them. Zero wasn't a liar and her EQ was low. She wasn't really sure what was going on, so she simply answered with honesty. Ji Yin Ran squinted her eyes and looked down at Han Sin with a look that was more frightening than Hell's most rotten demon. She slowly approached him. Let me explain. It isn't what you think. This is all a misunderstanding. Han Sin wished to explain. Ji Yin Ran walked in front of Han San and then smiled a smile that was creepier than the officers. You love to watch girls change their clothes? I will show you how it's done right when we go home. The smile remained fixed on Ji Yinran's face, and it gave Han Sin a horrible chill. Let's go to the mall and buy the most expensive garment. Then, you can dress yourself up in it and show me. Han Sin quickly said, Shut up and get in here. Ji Yinran grabbed Han Sen by the ear and pulled him into the next room. Many screams were heard after that. A while later, Hansen managed to explain everything clearly. He desperately wanted to escape the wrath of her finger. After dinner was done, Hansen saw stay up laid up in the observation tower. He walked over and started to chat with him. This matter concerns our lives. Is there something you need to tell me? Stay up late was more injured than Hansen was. He was reclining on a sofa with a hot cup of tea. He stared up at the sky as he replied. That was the 3rd Division Special Forces officer. He trained all its members, myself included. Stay up late sounded okay, just a little cold. Still, it was a soothing voice to listen to. But what he said next shocked Han San. Stay up late was just a soldier, not a high-ranking officer or important individual in the Crystallizer civilization. He only knew the history of the Crystallizers from what he learned in the history books. The history he knew about the Crystallizers placed their origins in the sanctuaries. The Crystallizers wished to avoid a war, and so they sought refuge in the sanctuaries. Heaven knew how long it took after that before their civilization developed into what it became. Many elites wished to leave the sanctuaries and return to the outside. They did succeed in doing this, but they were also destroyed. Something bad happened inside the sanctuaries that resulted in the destruction of their entire civilization. That was what became their recorded history. Stay up late didn't exactly know what had happened, amidst the downfall and disaster. It affected him, anyway, and put him to sleep inside the geno fluid. He remained there in stasis until Han San woke him up. Stay up late only remembered the powers passing over him that made things feel as if the world was ending. He couldn't resist it and passed out. Nowadays, all that remained of the crystallizers were fragments and remnants. Only ruins had been left behind, following what transpired. Stay up late said the crystallizers were far more advanced than humans, at their peak. They had evolved more than humans, as well. Even elites like him were just soldiers back then. He was in the special forces, but that still put him a long way from being the best of the best. There were four crystallizer elites, the Northern King, Eastern King, Southern King, and Western King. Aside from Eastern King, the others wished to escape the sanctuaries. They wanted to leave and reclaim the lands they had lost. But the crystallizers had been gone from that world for too long, and they had no clue how scary it had become. Their developments made them too confident, and Han Sun knew the end. Humans were a tribe of crystallizers, or to put it in a slightly starker way, they were test tube results of beings that had been spliced with crystallizer genes. Many test subjects were regarded as the lowest of the low in the sanctuaries so they were given the opportunity to grow. The crystallizers were hoping to produce a greater race that would one day help them reclaim the lands they had lost. There were many races based on the crystallizers. Some were immediately sent out of the sanctuaries, but none were able to survive longer than a month. Stay Up Late recalled there was a place they used as a graveyard, where they could also store their geno armors. But after the disaster, 
most of their civilization was destroyed, and the location of that place was unknown to him now. Hansan could guess he was talking about the hero spirit hall. What humans died there? Amidst the fighting? Hansen asked. Stay up late went silent for a bit before responding. When he did, he said, the creatures were given crystallizer genes, but the splicing also included the genes of other beings, too. As a result, they were different. To the best of my knowledge, the humans were incapable of reaching the Alliance before the disaster. Humans did eventually get there, but it was only after our downfall. Once there, you started to breed, but you only created one creature. How was it able to reproduce? Hansen asked. So? Your race is called human, but you have other genes within you. Still, your body kept the same height as the crystallizers. The other genes may have come from more crystallizers belonging to a different tribe. Stay up late said. Hansen asked stay up late a number of other questions. Hansen was worried. As the last time the crystallizers opened the sanctuary, it remained open. If someone generated a geno armor, they'd be sent out of the sanctuary. It was impossible to close the sanctuaries now, and in regards to how that might be done, only the four kings had known. But even if Hansan and Stay Up Late did know how to close the sanctuaries, they probably wouldn't have been able to do it by themselves. What is the outside world like? Hansen was curious to learn about this. Stay Up Late gave a wry smile and said, I don't know. Like I said, I was merely a soldier. Even the high-class crystallizers didn't know much about the outside world, though. If they had, they wouldn't have made the mistakes they did, which resulted in the near obliteration of our race. They hid in the sanctuaries for too long, not learning about the outside world. Hansen thought this might be the case. After they were done talking, he decided to go and see Han Yufei. He explained the situation to him and told him not to generate his self-geno armor. Too many elites were known to have died out there so it was too risky for him to do it, as well. Still, Hansen needed to practice, and he didn't dare slow down. He went as fast as he could. Even though the sanctuaries were open now, stay up late said the creatures from the outside could not get in. But if that was true, that made Hansen wonder how the crystallizers ended up getting destroyed. So, Hansen did not feel too safe being inside the sanctuary. He kept on practicing. If something happened, Having a great deal of power amassed would be the best thing. And Hansan did not believe that the creatures from the outside could not get in. If they couldn't, then how had the Nine Life Cat entered and gained so much authority? The officer did not show up again. Aside from constant practice by himself, Hansan also spent some time practicing with Stay Up Late and Crystallizer technology. He also spent time learning about Hard Eye. He spent a whole month on that subject alone. If he had to go up against the officer again, there wouldn't be much of a risk. He'd be able to use hard eye. But the officer did not show up. Hansan wasn't sure whether that was because the officer knew he was too weak to go up against him, or whether he had gone back to concocting a new scheme that would take some time. As Hansen rested, he took time to investigate the Western King Sword. It was a crystallizer's geno armor, like the glove and crystal shoes. Hansen asked Stay Up Late what the difference between this Geno armor and the others were. Stay Up Late did not know, though. He said every crystallizer could generate Geno armor, but only the four kings could generate these special Geno armors. The crystallizer glove and crystallizer shoes had wills of their own, but the Western King sword seemed entirely inanimate. Hans' son could not sense that it had a will, and neither could he sense any special power it may have possessed. After Hansen and Stay Up Late examined it, they thought the officer must have used a special method to combine the sword with himself. The sword had probably become lifeless because it was away from the officer. Hansen had nothing to do right now, so he used the Blood Pull Sutra and dropped a smidgen of blood on the Western King Sword. The real blood Geno core had become a part of who he was. It was in his blood, and Hansen's blood could therefore be called real blood. It was no weaker than the actual real blood Geno core. And as Hansen grew and became stronger, it would develop too. Hansen put a drop of his blood on the Western King Sword. The blood didn't spread and blend into the metal, however, and it just remained a droplet upon the surface. I can't believe this isn't working. Hansen cut his wrist and bled some more of his real blood over the sword and went at it until it was entirely painted red. Even after rubbing it in, it didn't work. 
Han Sin put the Western King sword aside, hoping the real blood would do something in time. If there was a will, there was a way, and Han Sen wasn't keen on giving up just yet. That was one of the four Crystal King armors, and he didn't think there'd be a fifth in existence. According to Stay Up Late, whether someone was qualified was determined by the Geno armor they generated. But the difference between the average Geno armor and the special Geno armors was something Stay Up Late couldn't accurately define. Fitness was not an accurate measurement, and it wasn't that you simply reached a certain fitness and were then able to generate a special armor. Eastern King, of the Four Kings, had a fitness that was not all that excellent during his earlier years. He was like an average crystallizer, and yet, he went on to generate one of those special Geno armors. So, the Crystallizer Observer's task was to watch their creatures grow and learn how they might go on to generate the special Geno armors. But before they could find another special one like those, the race was destroyed and brought to ruin. Even the Crystallizers did not know if a qualified one currently existed. Hansen went to practice the story of genes. He progressed quickly, and it was like he was learning new skills every single day. And through that, his fitness was rising. Even so, it would still take a long time for him to recover the demigod strength he had lost. Entering the sanctuary again, Han San appeared right where he should have been. Xie Qing King was still there, too. Although the Nine Life Cat had told him his blood would not restrict him from entering any sanctuary, he didn't really know how to get to any of the others, as of yet. For the time being, he was stuck in the Fourth God's Sanctuary. Han San was worried about the officer appearing, though, so he wouldn't stay there for long. He had a chat with Xie Qing King, and the spirit asked Han San to take his latest issue of the comic. He wanted it uploaded. Han Sen's life had been quiet for a while now. After the last fight, the officer and God's organization seemed to have been dealt with. He didn't hear anything about their movements anymore, and there was no news regarding potential operations. Han San was a legend in the Alliance, but it was fortunate he was not one to revel in the limelight and fame of such stature. And truth be told, he could control the entire Alliance by force, if he so wanted to. Even though he didn't do this just yet, Han Sen's power was still sending ripples across the alliance. The Ji family grew more quickly and steadily. They were no longer given any trouble. Some said it was because of their strong ties with others, but those associations paled in comparison to the influence of Han San. In the next election, Ji Ruajin was planning on running for the presidency again. Some of the other families that had ties with Han Sen also benefited. Even if Han Sin didn't want to play any role or part in the politics of the government, his mere existence was influencing things. It didn't mean much to him, though. Controlling the whole alliance through bureaucracy wasn't even remotely interesting to him. Civilizations like the Crystallizers were destroyed easily. Humans would fall even swifter if similar forces came against them. The officer was an enemy, yes, but what he said was true. Time passed, and Little Flower was three years old. Han San wished to send him to a kindergarten, but he was afraid that God's organization might come and bring Little Flower harm if he was out there without Han Sen's supervision. After a lengthy discussion with the family, they decided on having Little Flower study at a kindergarten on Roka. Han San could protect him there, and Little Flower would be able to socialize with ordinary folk of society. Han San decided to buy half of the planet, too. Little Flower's kindergarten was located on the side that he did not own though. Traveling would take some time. Stay Up Late volunteered to take Little Flower to school every day and bring him home. He worked harder than Ji Yin Ran and Han Sin, that was for sure. He frequently said Little Flower was special, and there was a chance he could be qualified. His potential was even greater than Han Sin's. So, he spent a lot of his time observing Little Flower. That made Han Sin feel safer. If the officer was planning on taking Little Flower, and Han Sin was late to the rescue, Stay up late could definitely keep the child protected for a time. After soaking the Western King's sword in blood for a whole year, a reaction was finally achieved. It wasn't falling under real blood's control, but the sword's own will was finally returning. But even with the will coming back, it wasn't quite like the glove and the shoes. It was easy to trigger the Western King's sword's power, at least. Hansen decided to give it to stay up late. Hansen would need someone to fight if the officer showed up again and Hansen himself wasn't around. Little Flower was a popular kid in school. There, though, aside from the principal, 
No one knew he was Han Sen's son. And even so, the kids and teachers all grew fond of him. He was the cutest kid in the kindergarten. Kids loved playing with him, and teachers liked treating him better than the others. But even so, Little Flower was still very quiet. No one knew he was Han Sen's son, and so other than being well-liked, he didn't draw much attention. Han Sen entered the sanctuary again, and there, he found the nine-life cat. Why are you here? Han Sen frowned. He didn't believe that their unexpected meeting was coincidental. Old Cat laughed and said, I found something interesting in the ruin, but I can't get it out by myself. Let's partner up again, if you're interested. I might help you, but only if you answer a few of my questions. No answer, no thank you, Hansen said sternly. You have nine life cat's blood. Come on, we're like family. You can ask me anything, and I'll give you a proper answer. Old cat spoke as if they were brothers. What is this thing on my back? Hansen asked old cat. It's nothing too exciting. That is the remains of a nine life cat. It is their leftover genes, old cat said with a slight tone of awkwardness. Does that mean there is more than one? Hansen asked. Old cat hesitated for a moment and then said, There aren't many. What's going on? Hansen frowned. Old cat wasn't answering fully and forwardly, and it was clear he was hiding something. Old cat retreated into thought before speaking next. He said, it's not a big secret only rare nine-life cats can leave behind something like that. And to the best of my knowledge, there are only ten. Hearing him say this, Han Sen's mind drifted back to Zero, who had the exact same thing. He still went on to ask, How many are there in the sanctuaries? Just one. It was from Human Emperor, Old Cat suddenly stopped short. Han Sen heard half of what he said, and immediately, his face changed. He looked at Old Cat and asked, Human Emperor visited the Nine Life Cat? Nine Life Cat comes from the outside. So the Human Emperor got out? Old Cat smiled and said, I guess, but he didn't go out with his powers intact. What does that mean? Hansen asked, If I told you I helped him out, you wouldn't believe me. So, it would be best if you stopped asking. And if you ever do make it out, you'll hear it from him. But if you can't make it out, such knowledge is useless to know, Old Cat said. Han Sen was shocked. He had no idea that an alpha human had made it out of the sanctuaries. Is he still alive then? Can you at least tell me that? Han Sen asked. I don't know. When I came here, he wasn't dead. But predicting if someone is dead or alive out there is now something anyone can do. Even me. Old Cat shook his head. Han Sen thought about this for a while and said, How did you even get into the sanctuary? As far as I know, aside from the crystallizers, no others were able to get inside. That was what concerned Han Sun the most. If the creatures from the outside could enter, just like Old Cat seemed to have, then that could spell out something pretty bad. Old Cat seemed to see through Han Sen's thoughts and answered, If nothing could get in, then how could feathers be here? Han Sen's face changed. Old Cat, with a cocky expression on his face, went on to say, But don't worry, if the crystallizers hadn't killed themselves, it would have been difficult for other races to enter. I came in when the crystallizers opened the sanctuaries. And yes, the crystallizers are practically all dead. They can't kill themselves anymore to open doorways. Did you destroy the crystallizers? Hansen asked, looking at Old Cat. Do I look like I'm capable of such an act? Old Cat revealed his claws. Hansen ignored the mocking and asked him, Well, could other creatures have made it through? Old Cat nodded. There were others, but I don't know them. Now come on. I've told you everything you wish to know. Will you follow me now? Why don't you tell me what for? Maybe I'll consider coming. Hansen smiled. Breaking a promise made to the Nine Life Cat isn't a very wise move to make. Think about it. Old Cat squinted his eyes. I said I'd consider coming along. I didn't say I'd come or not come. Hansen smiled again. Old Cat was a professional liar and Han Sun wasn't willing to put absolute stock into everything he was being told. And right now, there was every chance he might be getting sold out. Old Cat saw that Han Sin really wasn't moving, so he went on to explain the ruins. Old Cat had discovered another lab with another race there. It hadn't woken up like the feather had, but just in case, he wanted to bring Han San for help. Old Cat explained that if nothing happened, he would take the item. If something bad happened, 
then any treasures they found would be shared. Han San asked him what he expected to find, but the cat's explanation made no sense to him. It was like some sort of bone that was similar to the one Han San retrieved before. What is the point in getting such a bone? Hansen couldn't figure out what that other bone was for, so now was as good a time to ask as any. They're useless in the sanctuaries, but out there, they're highly sought after by all. If you can get out, you'll find out for certain. Old Cat didn't really explain anything. Hansen mulled the idea over some more, but ultimately decided to follow. He was quite curious about discovering another race, anyway. So, do the sanctuaries only have one of these items? brought here by human emperor? Hansen asked. It should be just one, assuming human emperor did not lie, old cat said. Hansen asked old cat how human emperor had managed to get the bone, but he didn't receive an answer. Old cat was afraid of telling him. Hansen was planning on going alone, but Xie Qing King overheard them and wanted to go along. Hansen wouldn't mind some extra help, and Xie Qing King was nearing emperor status, too. He'd be very good to have along. But before setting out, Han's son returned to the Alliance. He took the glove, but left the crystal shoes for Ji Yin Ran in case something happened during his absence. The three of them entered the relics Han Sen had been to before. Han Sen thought the lab was the one he had previously visited, with the feather inside. But even though Nine Life Cat was taking them to the same ruins, that was not the lab they were headed for. Where did you find this thing? Han Sen throw Ned. There are three other labs, and I found what I seek in one of the others. I know my way around, and if it doesn't wake up like the feather did, we should be safe. Old Cat spoke as he led them forward. They walked around the ruins for a while before reaching their destination. When they entered, it looked just like the one Hansen had previously visited. There were many tools and crystal tanks. The laboratory was damaged, though. The room was in bad shape, and much of the equipment was broken. Many crystal tanks had broken. Two, leaking their fluids everywhere. There were a number of rotten bodies and bones scattered all about. What is this? asked Xie Qing King, holding his nose and looking at the bodies and the liquids around them. They are creatures held for testing and experimentation. Some are prototypes of something else, like him. Old Cat jumped toward one of the crystal tanks, and he spoke with eyes fixed on it. Hansen and Xie Qing King looked at Old Cat, and then observed the strange creatures contained within the tank. Han San could not describe what it was. It looked like a human, but a bug at the same time. It had human limbs, but the head had the eyes of a fly, with the multitude of lenses. And while the limbs were like a human's, the joints were those of bugs. It looked very weird. It's just a disgusting bug. After Old Cat said that, he leaped onto the tank and began slapping it with a paw. He obviously intended to break it open. Are you ready? Dead or alive, it doesn't matter. Behead the thing as soon as you are able to, Old Cat said to Han San. Yes. Han San was in agreement paying. The crystal tank broke, and the liquid and the bug man came spilling out. Han San did not say a word. He simply summoned the white Geno armor, and with his hand like a blade, struck the neck of the creature. The hand, now clad in the gauntlets of the armor, made a metallic striking noise when it hit. Han Sen's power and Gino armor had only been able to make a slight scuff on its neck. Fortunately, the bugman showed no reaction. It looked to be already dead. But just to be safe, Han Sen gave it another hundred cuts until he was able to break its shell. The meat inside was like jam, and there was no blood. It looked like it had been dead for quite some time. God knew how many times Han Sen had to hit it after that. But eventually, the head was lopped off. As he worked on it, he thought to himself, this thing is so tough. Thankfully, it is dead. If it wasn't, this would be quite a lot of trouble. Han San, according to the terms of our deal, if it was dead when we found it, the item we came for belongs to me. You'll hold up your end of our bargain, correct? Old Cat saw the bug man's head fall off and quickly jumped on it to speak. Fine. Suit yourself. Hansen did not plan on stealing from him, so he just walked back a few steps and watched the old cat. He was keen to see what he was going to obtain. Old cat used his claws to scratch away at the bug man's armor. A deep crack was instantly formed, and that gave Hansen quite the shock. Hansen knew old cat was not weak, but the action it had just performed was rather shocking. Even if Hansen used the glove, 
he knew he'd have much trouble trying to break the shell. It wouldn't have been easy. Old Cat was certainly much stronger than he was letting on, and much stronger than Han Sen's own estimation. Old Cat's claws were sharper than a surgeon's scalpel, that was for sure. In no time at all, he was peeling the creature open, and before long, pulled back a paw that was holding something green. What is that? A stone? Hansen looked right at the item in Old Cat's hands. Those are its guts. Old Cat looked so happy to have obtained the jade-looking guts. Hansen didn't see where the cat put it, but he still asked, They look like rocks, not organs. What are they truly for? Hansen asked, This is good stuff. You'll know all about it once you get out. With how you are now, you won't understand. After Old Cat dug up the guts, he ended his search. He jumped and said, Let's go. There is nothing left. Xie Qing King, meanwhile, wasn't feeling too good about this. He said, While we're here, shouldn't we explore more of this strange place? Do you think we have come here to sightsee? You'll die if you explore anymore. Old Cat rolled his eyes and started walking out. Han Sin and Xie Qing King looked at each other and then followed after Old Cat so they could be led back to where they had initially come from. The three of them walked past the greenhouse, and as they passed it, Old Cat hunkered a little and asked, Did you touch the stuff in there? We were with you. You know that we didn't take anything. Xie Qin King said, Old Cat, what's going on? Hansen asked, looking across the greenhouse. Someone has been digging in the soil. Old Cat stared at the disturbed earth. Han saw it too. It was like a freshly dug grave, with soil churned up everywhere. You didn't dig this, did you? Hansen asked, with a frown. If I did, why would I ask? Old Cat madly rebutted. If it wasn't you or us too, might there be other creatures around? And if that isn't possible, maybe the thing buried dug its own way out, Xie Qing King said. Han San and Old Cat looked glum. No matter what the case was, this was bad news. Let's get out of here. After Old Cat said that, he started to run. Han Sin and Xie Qing King ran as well. They ran for a while, but eventually, their faces fell. They had run dozens of miles, but they hadn't escaped the vicinity. They found that they had walked in a loop, ending up back at the greenhouse and the fresh hole. It gave them a very bad feeling. They looked around, but it was all quiet. There didn't seem to be anything else there that was alive. Han Sen's Dongxian aura could not feel the presence of other creatures, but they fell silent and went to examine the deep hole. Keep going. Old Cat told them to keep going, and so they did. This time, however, they walked faster. It wasn't long before the three of them ended up back at the greenhouse. How can this be happening? Xie Qing King wasn't afraid, and he was actually quite happy to see the greenhouse again. Han San and Old Cat looked at each other and prepared to run, but suddenly, they heard a strange noise. Pang, 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 pang. The soil around the grave started to explode. Many more black holes were created, and the entire graveyard looked like one giant beehive. In the dark holes, there was something red like lanterns shining. When the red lights rose to the surface, they were revealed to be the triangularly shaped heads of snakes. The red lights were their gleaming eyes. Now, black things were pouring out of the dark holes. They came straight for Han Sen, making a sharp noise. Han San was startled as he looked at them. Old Cat had already escaped with incredible speed. Xie Qing run? Han Sen shouted and started to run. They did not know what those black-scaled snakes were, but if Old Cat had run away upon seeing them, they thought it was a good idea to follow after him. Xie Qing King did not want to run but he obliged Han Sen's request and went along with him. The toxic snakes were coming at them like a breaking tide. They were very fast, but thankfully, they were slower than Han Sen. The trio kept on running as fast as they could, but a while later, the snakes appeared in front of them. The greenhouse also ended up in front of them, too. Somehow, through means unknown, they had been forced to make another loop. Now that they had snakes in front and behind, they were firmly sandwiched. Seeing the groups of snakes gathering together, Xie Qing King unleashed a silver light. His fists were like a volcano, spewing silver fire as he threw them forward to punch the black snakes. Alu-alu-alu. The raging fists of silver light killed a vast number of the black-scaled snakes upon contact. The toxic blood was thrown everywhere. 
I thought these things were something scary. They're this week? When Xie Ching King stopped punching, the place had undergone a makeover to look like a slaughterhouse. The bodies of the snakes were everywhere, and not a single one had survived his rampage. Old Cat looked at him as if he were an idiot, and he said, Are you stupid? If this was that easy to deal with, why would we have run? You killed so many of those snakes, she is going to go mental. Old Cat, what do you mean? Hansen asked with a frown. Old Cat did not answer. An explosion came from the greenhouse, one that sounded like the earth tearing apart. Something emerged from the ground. It was a person with long hair and a beautiful body. Or at least the upper part was, for the lower body was a slithering snake. She'd have been a beautiful woman if she was a complete one. She opened her eyes, but there were no pupils. She even had the eyes of a snake. She stared at the three of them intensely. Don't move. Don't make a sound. Her vision is bad. So there is a chance she'll be unable to see us right here. Old Cat told them, retreating to the side. She can't see, but she's not deaf. You're so loud. She'll certainly hear you, Xie Qing King said. Not moving. She can't hear, either. She can see moving objects, so if we don't move, she won't be able to see us, Old Cat said. Han San and Xie Qing King did not believe him, but when Lady Snake came out, she made a noise with her tongue but did nothing else. She didn't pay them any attention. Lady Snake moved around a bit, but it appeared as if she couldn't see the three of them. It was as if she was moving around in search of something. She really can't hear or see us. If that's the case, why are we afraid of something so dumb? Xie Qing King was shocked. Dumb? You better hope she doesn't find us. She can kill you as easily as she might a chicken. Old Cat looked at him with disdain. Stop it. You too. She's coming, Hansen said. Looking at Lady Snake. Lady Snake could neither see nor hear, but she was sure Hansan was around there. It kept searching and searching, leaving him unable to move. What should we do? She will bump into us sooner or later. And when that happens, we'll have no choice but to move, Hansen said. She can't hear and she can't see. Why don't we just get rid of her when she comes too close? Xie Qin King said. Old Cat laughed and said, No one is stopping you from trying. If you want to die, be my guest. I will be running. How do we escape? Hansen asked. Old Cat laughed and said, I don't know. But judging from the way she's searching, she'll be bumping into you first. And when she's busy with you too, I can have a chance to run. You're F asterisk king shameless. Hansen shot him a glare. That sounds like a good idea, but even so, you cannot leave here completely. She will hunt you down, one way or another. If we are all going to die, why don't we work together, find her weakness, and kill her through cooperation? Old Cat said, No, we cannot fight her. I am old, and I still want to live a while longer. I will run first, anyway. There's nothing you can do about that. Look around you, man. Don't you think this place looks a little different? Maybe her rising made the restrictions disappear. Perhaps we can waltz out now? Okay. If you want to run off, why don't you tell us what it is? Hansen sighed. Old Cat looked at Lady Snake, and then said, If I'm correct, this thing is a new creature. One combined with a Naga. She has the power of a Naga, and she's got the creature's genes. That makes her even scarier. What are their weaknesses? Hansen asked. I told you. Her vision and hearing are awful, Old Cat said. And? How do we kill her? Hansen pressed. Haha. Nagas are a noble race and any of them can easily destroy the tribes and families of others. Where the crystallizers found Nagas, I have no idea, but I really don't think you can kill her. It would be best if you decide which of the two of you would rather die first. Who knows? Maybe one of you can make it out while the other is mauled. Old Cat sounded quite spiteful. After that, Lady Snake came right before them. If she slithered in another circle, she'd undoubtedly bump into them. She'd hit Xie Qing King first, too, judging from her position. When Lady Snake was only 30 meters away from Xie Qing King, the spirit said, If she's as strong as the cat says, I will try and fend her off while you make a break for it. Just remember to upload my comic. Han Sun wished to say something, but the monster suddenly changed direction. It was supposed to hit Xie Qing King, but now it was going for Old Cat instead. Oh, Sage Asterisk T. Old Cat's eyes widened. 